What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Chris here from Mainly Mesh. <laughs> I'm happy to be home. <laughs> so, um, quickly wanted to. Oh, shoot. Oh. Whoop. Whoop. Not a very efficient rolling chair. Uh, quickly wanted to update you guys on the giveaway. Not going to be giving away a piece of Screen King 1S because I need to put this in a stick that I already did a giveaway for. Whoops. But it's okay because we have Ninja Standard. Um, so, just so you guys know, gonna it's going to be a piece of Ninja Standard Wax Mesh instead. Um, so if you like, wow, I really like String King's new waxed formula. Sorry. <laughs> um, kind of also wanted to talk a little bit about um, furthering some of the points that I made in my Goldilocks channel video because uh, you guys have been treating that like the video to end all videos, uh, which I appreciate a lot. But um, there is obviously much more to a channel than just how narrow it is. So um, here I have two examples first I have the giveaway head which fun fact as strung right now throws straight into the ground <laughs> um, I never like using three shooting strings with chenangos um, it's usually why so I gotta work on that a little but um, <laughs> once that I think I'm just gonna take out the bottom shooting string it'll probably be fine um, so here we have oops Peter's falling asleep what in my last video would have been considered to be a Goldilocks channel. Hugs the ball, hugs the sides, right? So that should have crazy hold and like no whip, right? Here we have the pocket that started it all, the Nas X, um, with once again a Goldilocks channel. <laughs> but this stick has a lot more hold than this stick and I want to talk about why and a lot of that has to do with how you double up pockets so if you noticed the slope on this stick is very small it's a very gradual slope it's kind of a mid-low pocket and as you see, it's not really catching anywhere. You can see it catch actually right on that shooting string, which is why it throws into the ground and why I need to fix that. But there's no, it's, it's a pretty solid pocket. You know, it might bag low, but right about here is as baggy as it's going to get. So what that means is this is going to have a very, very smooth release. And it will have maximized hold for that type of pocket but it's not it's going to function very differently than this head so if we compare the NAS really quickly here we see a little bit higher pocket right it's gonna bag a little low but not too low and then we notice it kind of shifts up a little and and I know I, I put a video out way before you guys were even subscribing to me um, about how I don't really believe in shifty pockets um, in terms of pockets that shift high um, in fact this is as shifty of a pocket as I will ever use um, because a lot of the times I think that just means whip um, if something is able to shift up and catch it's gonna have a little more whip but the reason why it's so nice on this this head with this mesh, uh, the size mesh, um, and this pocket is because it shifts up to a certain point, as you can see right there, and then releases. So it adds just a little bit extra whip on your shot. Um, so you don't have anything sailing on you because I am a guy who when I pass I do not like whip on my stick I'm an attack man when I'm coming from behind I don't want to need to wind up to get the pass off I like just having my stick right here kind of old school and being able to get whatever feed I need to get off of get off um, 
where was I taking that? Shifty pockets. Um, oh, so if you if you push the ball up to this shifty point, you notice a lot of. Can I do this one-handed? Hey. Yeah, well, I can kind of leave it there. You notice that the lines, so if you trace the lines, so if we look at the outside of the channel, if you trace those lines back and where they feed into, it all feeds into that double SI, right? And then after that is the point where it's just kind of unchanneled again. So if you look at it from the back, you see the channel, and it's just kind of sloping off right into the throat string. And so that's why I love the double SI because I believe that with this type of mesh, this size of mesh, the double SI allows it to sag up just that little bit extra, but then if you tie it down well enough back here, it's not gonna go overboard. So you will almost never see me use a triple up anywhere, whether that be on an Evo X, on a wide head so you know you could call this a triple up if you suppose if I, I mean I suppose you could um, because technically it is a one stacked SI so one two three diamonds but those two are locked down so it's I don't know I don't I don't consider it, it would not function the same as if you just did a three right there um, and like I said, keep in mind, I'm a guy who likes pretty low whip. So if you're into higher whip, then I would absolutely recommend tripling up. Um, but so that's why I've really come to appreciate this stacked SI with this type of mesh. Um, I just I just think it really and, and it's funny because so there's that um, now occasionally I use the variant where there's actually a knot tucked inside this SI. Um, I've also altered this pattern up here so that these are SI knots as well. Um, uh, just because, like I said, I like a little less whip um, and it just really ties the pocket down. But you can actually get a little bit more whip and a little more bag if you just do a straight up SI for this pattern. Um, but so once again, you compare it to, so I have I have a, uh, a double SI, a stacked SI up here. Um, but that's that's more playing catch up for the chenango. So usually in a chenango, um, I tend to you can't see in all that junk. Um, like look, there's a uh, stacked SI right off the bat. Um, for chenangos, I tend to use a stacked SI in like the first or second knot just to to catch up from the crazy amount of channel you've already created at the top. Um, but if you notice where the pocket really is, I'm just using high strung double ox, hashtag contest. <laughs> but uh, I'm basically just interlocking these down. Um, and so, so that's why you're not gonna have nearly that same amount of catch. And so this is just gonna be a really nice, solid, low pocket. Um, so that's kind of the next step of the Goldilocks theory. Um, you don't want too much shiftiness, you don't want well, I mean, you could want no shiftiness. Um, I, I I say this a lot to, to players who, who play mostly vertically in terms of, you know, cradling one-handed and, and passing straight up and down. And if you look at a lot of college attackmen, they're not really doing much with their sticks off to the sides. Unless they're Canadian, they're doing crazy toe drags. A lot of, I mean, a lot of really elite college attackmen just play completely vertically. And... And uh, you know, for someone like that, you you you're gonna want the ball low in your stick, um, because it's closer to your hand, it's closer to your body, it's just it's just more beneficial to you. And it, and if you if you like the if if you like the ball low in your stick, then there's no reason to have a shifty pocket, because um, you might as well just keep the keep the whip down. Um, so that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we'll have the winner Wednesday tomorrow. I uh, got a fun package in from Lax All Stars who wants to hook you guys up with another something something. So we're going to have another little Grow the Game giveaway. Uh, thank you guys for all your entries. Keep them coming. Remember, today is the last day to enter. Well, and tomorrow until I actually announce it. Today is the last day to enter 
the giveaway for this stick on Instagram just by shouting me out. Piece of cake. Oh, yeah. Win an awesome stick. That's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you guys next time.